give you a sense of what we're, what we're going to do tonight and how we're going to proceed. And I'd also like to introduce some of the folks that you see on the screen. Actually, not some of the folks. How about all of the folks? That would work better. Um, we're going to, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit in a couple minutes about the seminary, particularly through our core values, so that if you're not familiar with Ashland Seminary, maybe that'll give you a glimpse and insight into who we are as a community. Uh, and then we're going to, to move into talking about the specifics of the Master of Arts in Clinical Mental Health Counseling. Um, we do have several of our faculty here tonight who uh, are here to uh, present and to answer questions so that um, uh, you can engage with them. So let me introduce them first. We have Yvonne Glass. Uh, Yvonne is the director of our clinical mental health counseling. She's going to be presenting in just a, a few minutes about the program. Uh, we also have two of our professors of counseling. We have uh, uh, Dr. Tony D'Onofrio, and we have Dr. Lee Weatherby, uh, and uh, they will be, be answering questions as well. Uh, the other people that are on your screen, I'm going to introduce them in the order from left to right that they're on my screen. We have our registrar, Laura B. Dox, and uh, Laura is the person who deals with grades and transcripts and schedules and, and a whole list of things. Uh, that if you become a student at Ashland, you will find you will have uh, numerous conversations with Laura. Uh, Renee Johnson is our uh, coordinator of admissions, and Renee is the person who handles the application process. So, uh, if you do decide to apply, uh, Renee will be the one who will be in touch with you to make sure that all of the documents are coming in. Uh, again, she deals with uh, helping you get transcripts. Uh, doing those kinds of evaluations. And again, once you apply, uh, you'll get to know Renee. Charlotte Cole is the Administrative Assistant for Marketing and Recruitment and also for Development. So she wears several hats. Uh, she also uh, works on posting on our website and social media. So she's quite busy and um, um, we're really glad to have her in the department. Erin uh, Panorwood is our coordinator for recruitment. Erin is the person that really would be probably your first contact uh, with Ashland Seminary, and he will help walk you through that those beginning stages of the process and uh, direct you to where you need to go to get your questions answered uh, as you as you move toward uh, your application and eventually matriculation. And I think that's it. I don't think I missed anybody. No. Okay. I'm uh, Shannon Petarinko. I'm here to learn about. Oh, the it's okay. Hi, Shannon. It's all right. I'm a principal in Medina, Ohio, and I'm just here to learn about the coursework. Okay. Well, wonderful. Well, we're glad you're here as well as the rest of you. You know what? I did miss somebody, Elizabeth. I needed to introduce you and I'm sorry that I, I missed you. I didn't went right by you on the screen. Elizabeth Schold is a 2007 graduate of our clinical mental health counseling program, and she's also an adjunct professor of counseling here at the seminary. She is licensed and she has practiced privately, also in a hospital setting. And she, since 2012, she has supervised other clinicians. And Elizabeth has graciously um, um, volunteered to join us tonight to tell you a little bit about her experience at Ashland Seminary as a student. So Elizabeth, we're glad that you can join us. Thank you. I am happy to be here and I'm happy to sing the praises of Ashland because it's been um, such a positive experience for me and I'm excited to see new faces and, and potential new people because um, it's somewhere that I'm so passionate about that I'm still there and uh, I've come back and, and I love it. And so um, I'll just share a little bit about my journey and um, you'll see throughout my journey that there's this common thread um, of staying at Ashland um, Seminary. So yeah, I am a licensed clinical counselor with supervisory status and I graduated December of 2007 um, and I was in the cohort for the 2005-2006 year. And when I was looking at places to go for grad school, um, I knew that I wanted to do a place that integrated my faith. I had gotten my undergrad at Ohio State, which was a very positive experience, but um, I kind of had felt like I was a number and I was ready to be more of um, 
just more known and more involved with my professors and with other students that uh, were doing the same thing as I was. So I toured um, Ashland and I also went to Asbury and uh, toured their seminary as well. However, I will tell you that I had such a peace at Ashland, um, just walking the campus, like I just really felt like God had given me a peace there. And I knew too professionally that my plan was to practice in Ohio. And so I wanted a school that I knew would be focusing on the licensure test for Ohio. And so that was something important for me. And um, they did a great job. I, I passed on my first try. So, um, the first year I would say Ashland was a lot about my own personal growth. I lived on campus in the China House, which is near um, near the campus, and um, there was a great community there. I had several other people in apartments that we would get together for meals, and that was really um, comforting for me as a single person when I started. That was a great, a great way for me to be connected. And uh, in the seminary for the cohort, we did a lot of self-reflection, learning um, kind of about the program and what God wants to do in our own lives, how we can be the best version of ourselves, so that we're able to therefore pour into and um, bless other people. I see counseling as a ministry, something that I've been called to. And, and I hope for those of you who are here, it's something that you feel that you're called to um, because it can be a challenging challenging thing. And um, I'm so grateful that I chose Ashland because there's not only the academic support, but there's also the spiritual support. And so that first year as we were going um, just through the coursework, I felt just that my professors really cared about me, that they cared about my spiritual health, my academic health. And I'll tell a funny story because now I can laugh and make fun of myself. It's been 15 years. So um, we had classes in kind of an auditorium type building. And actually I did have Dr. Weatherby and, and Dr. D'Onofrio. I had a different last name then. So, but um, Dr. Mann, I, in Dr. Mann's class, I was having trouble staying awake and he pulled me outside of class one time and he was concerned, not, you know, wasn't upset with me, but he was concerned about if I wasn't getting enough sleep or if I was studying too much or something. So I really got the sense of they cared about me. He knew my name. He knew this isn't normal for you. What's going on? And I really appreciated, appreciated that. And like I said, I can laugh about that now, kind of horrifying then. But um, my second year was more about academics and, and skill focused. And I had the opportunity to do a part of my internship and all of my practicum at the counseling center there on campus, Metzer Counseling Center. I had a wonderful supervisor who I still keep in contact with today. And it really inspired me for my future, what I wanted to do and how I wanted to be a supervisor too, because of just her pouring into me, building my confidence and my skills. So years down the road, um, I was in a job situation I wanted to get out of and just happened to go to an alumni event. And some of the alumni connected me to a private counseling center. And so without even applying or interviewing, I got a new job and it was with other um, Ashland Seminary people. So I thought, well, that's, that's really cool. Then a couple of years later, when that counseling center decided to disband, I was adopted by another group of Ashland Theological Seminary grads who said, hey, you know, we know Liz Schold and we'll take you on. Um, and they kind of adopted me into their counseling group as well. So you'll see this common thread in my story of this Ashland Theological Seminary group, just knowing each other, having that community, caring about each other and continuing um, my journey. Well, then I, my promise, I won't talk too long, but then my husband and I moved for a job change far away. Um, I lost all of my clients because we were too far. And um, I just happened to move closer to Ashland. And I sent one of the professors an email and I said, hey, just, I don't know if there's ever would be an opportunity, but I would love to be a part of the seminary community. It just meant a lot to me. 
And long behold, they uh, allowed me to join and to help do some adjunct work there at the campus with the very professors that I had myself and, and still very much respect. And um, that has been amazing to me to be able to now build into other students' lives and be, um, I supervise at the Counseling Center now, Smetzer, to be at the very place where I started my journey is just really cool. I feel like it's full circle of um, just God's hand and knowing my journey, knowing the places that I would thrive and using the seminary to facilitate that, which is, is just a really fun thing for me. Um, so yeah, as, as I was reflecting back, I was kind of just surprised about how really big of a role that the seminary played in my life. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's a testimony to how they care about their students and not just the academic portion, but investing spiritually and just um, relationally in those people that, um, that come. And so I am um, a testimony of someone that's graduated. I did it and um, now I'm back and um, maybe I'll have the opportunity to work with some of you. So thank you. Mm. Elizabeth, thank you so much for that. Uh, that, that was wonderful. Uh, that's the first time I've heard your journey. So thank you so much for sharing that. You know, I was thinking as you were sharing uh, about two things. One is that you talk about your calling. And that is critical for us at Ashland Seminary, that um, what we do is the result of God's call upon our life and that we journey together as, we, as God calls us. And the other thing I was thinking about was that when you were talking about your experience at Ashland, how really that, um, that really sounds like an embodiment of the core values that we have at Ashland Seminary. So that is a wonderful introduction to... Um, what I want to, to say about the core values, and I'm gonna share my screen here. So uh, Ashland Seminary, you know, um, when Elizabeth talked about calling, calling is critical for us. Uh, we think that's foundational for who we are, that we believe that God places a call on our lives uh, as we all make an impact for the kingdom of God. And as scripture tells us that God calls us to different vocations, and certainly counseling is one of those vocations. Along with that sense of calling uh, are the core values, and that is, is who are we as a community? And we have broken that down into four, uh, four areas that we articulate that we think helps explain who we are. Uh, and all four of these, we believe, help us as we uh, strive to love God and to love our neighbors. Uh, the first is scripture. Ashland Seminary believes that God's saving revelation has been supremely made in Jesus Christ. The Bible is the complete and authentic record of that revelation. We are committed to both the Old and New Testaments as God's infallible message for the church and the world. The scriptures are foundational to the education process at Ashland Seminary. Uh, you will find at Ashland Seminary across the board with faculty and staff. Uh, that we all have a, a high regard for scripture uh, as uh, the message of Jesus Christ, that it reveals Jesus Christ to us, and that is the authentic, the authentic record of the revelation of God's people. Uh, we are committed to the whole of scripture, both in the Old and New Testaments, and that they are foundational to the educational process at Ashland Seminary. So, so that the scripture is foundational, not only in the classes that we teach about scripture, but in all of the other classes as well, including counseling classes, because the, the faculty are people of faith uh, who accept the scripture as the revelation of, of God. Uh, but we don't just talk about scripture, and, and we don't talk about scripture simply because we want to learn, learn information about the scripture. Uh, one of the reasons that we study scripture is because we believe that God wants to spiritually form us through it. And so Ashland Seminary believes that spiritual formation is at the heart of all we do. Spiritual formation is the process of nurturing an intimate relationship with God, encompassing heart, soul, and mind. Spiritual formation is the obedience to the word of Christ and an intentional commitment to grow, study, pray, and be held accountable for our life and witness before both before God and one another. 
And again, our goal is to more completely love God and our neighbor. And in order to do that, we must become spiritually formed, conform to the image of Christ. And so again, it's not just about uh, learning information, learning scripture, learning skills. It's about uh, becoming uh, more of what Christ would have us become. And we believe that we have to do that in community, that spiritual formation is not simply an individual task. And so Ashland Seminary builds community through a shared faith. As students, staff, faculty, and administration, we identify ourselves as community. We express community through chapel, classes, spiritual formation groups, social events, conferences, prayer cells, and joint ministry experiences as we work and live together. Within this environment of support and challenge, it is possible for us to grow inwardly in our relationship with God and others and in our outlook on the world. And so what you're going to find is that our classes, again, are not just simply intellectual exercises, as important as that is, uh, but they are communities in which we care for one another, both students, staff, and faculty. Uh, and Elizabeth expressed that well uh, as she talked about uh, Dr. Mann's concern for her. Uh, that there is a sense in which we are accountable to each other as a community of faith, as we all grow in our relationship to God. And our fourth core value is academic excellence. Ashland Seminary is committed to academic excellence. While seminary education is unique, Ashland creates an atmosphere conducive to academic studies and sustains high scholastic standards from an internationally recognized faculty. Integrated within our curriculum is the whole framework of the seminary's core values, leading to a goal of lifelong learning expressed through servant leadership. Um, I, I uh, love to brag about our faculty. Uh, I think that they are uh, at the top of seminary faculties and they take their, um, their academic research, their academic studies and their teaching very seriously. It is critical uh, to them for the way they fulfill their calling as Christians. And so in the classroom, you can expect to get the most current, uh, most up-to-date. Uh, okay, um, so at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to Yvonne uh, so that she can talk to you about uh, the specifics of the mental uh, health counseling program. Hi, everybody. How are you guys this evening? Do you all see the, um, I don't know how familiar you are with Zoom, but there's um, emoticons at the bottom under reactions. So you can give like thumbs up and stuff. Yeah, I like that one. We use Zoom a lot, so we're real familiar with it. <laughs> if you have questions, I'm sorry, my throat's a little scratchy. I've been talking a lot today. Um, <clears throat> If you have questions while I'm walking through the overview of the program, please feel free to use the chat or um, you can unmute and say, hey, Dr. Glass, and then ask the question. So I'm going to start us off with the passage of scripture that I open up our orientation with. Um, it says it's from Esther 4 and 14. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place but you and your father's family will perish. And who knows, but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. When we talk about the counseling profession, I was excited to hear Liz talk about it. You can see the passion that a lot of us have about it um, and that we don't just look at it as a profession, but that we're answering the call that God has placed in our lives. It's a call to not remain silent in a time of trouble, but to rise to the occasion and bring deliverance to our hurting people. And um, our, intro to orientate, our intro to clinical mental health counseling class, I talk a lot about how one of the roles of a counselor is to walk alongside people during some of the hardest times of their life. And what a privilege that is um, that we don't always let people in, especially when we're struggling. And for someone to allow you to come in, that that is indeed a privilege and not something to be taken lightly. And so we'll talk a lot about that throughout the program and a little bit about that tonight. <clears throat> Excuse me. So why choose ATS? And the reason I titled this, this slide that um, is because 
quite honestly, there are a lot of programs in the state of Ohio, but I think Ashland Theological Seminary is very unique for a lot of reasons. And so we're gonna walk through some of those. Um, the biggest one is because you've chosen to answer the call to the counseling profession. And the reason you've chosen to do that is because you like to help people and you like people. So I think that's a good thing. You feel the call of God to be a servant. A lot of the work that you do as a counselor is from that perspective of being a servant, um, but it's part of that walking that journey alongside someone. You want to be a part of a growing in-demand profession. Um, one of the things that this pandemic has shown us is just how much people do need to have solid mental health, how it's gonna carry us through this time. And there is a growing need for licensed counselors um, not just within our country, but in our state and within our current uh, environment. And so our goal is to bring you here to our campus. Like Liz said, there's a sense of calm here. I've noticed that from the moment that I came to Ashland and uh, interacting with our professors. And then you are sent out into the world to do the um, work that you've been called to do. There's a desire to work in a variety of settings with diverse clientele. Your clients will hopefully not look just like you, but that they will be different and we will add to each other's lives. That you want challenging yet rewarding work. The work of counseling is not simple. Um, it is a challenge, but it is very, very rewarding. And so while there are times that we will work with our clients and things will be hard to hear or the work will be hard to do, the reward is always great when you see on the other side someone making it through that journey and feeling um, more empowered and feeling that they have an advocate in their corner. One of the other reasons to choose our program is that it's a KCREP accredited program. KCREP assures the quality of the program, um, but also in the state of Ohio, we are considered a KCREP state. So you don't have to attend a KCREP accredited program to get licensed, but it definitely streamlines the licensure process. It makes things a lot easier when it comes to licensure. And so you'll want to choose a KCREP accredited program. And then one of the things that I find beneficial about our faculty is that they are all active in the profession. They are counseling, they are consulting, they are doing professional presentations, they are writing, they are engaged in the field. Like Matt was saying, um, they are very much engaged in the up-to-date um, research that is available for our profession and that we use that in the classroom. We also use um, some of our client interactions in the classroom. And so the fact that we are so active in the profession is very much a benefit and a service to our students. <clears throat> so I already said KCREP is, um, we're a KCREP state. So one of the other benefits of the program is that our students graduate with a generalist degree. You can get a clinical mental health counseling degree in it, at any KCREP accredited program. But at our program, you'll also have a specialty focus. Our students work in explicitly and non-explicitly Christian settings, but they can identify themselves as having that specialty of being a Christian counselor. Our graduates work in hospitals, private practice, community mental health agencies, prisons, nursing home facilities, and school-based agencies. So you'll be able to work in any type of environment, but you can choose to identify as a Christian counselor or not as a Christian counselor. And that's a big benefit to be able to say that I have this degree, but I also have a specialization. Our faculty, um, you have the opportunity to learn how to fully integrate your Christian worldview into every facet of the profession. And that is because you'll watch us do that in each class. So you'll learn um, diagnosis, theories, counseling techniques, all from the Christian worldview. You'll learn how to integrate those fully um, and how to do that in an, a professional and ethical way, which is a really big um, point when it comes to being able to identify yourself as a Christian counselor if you decide to do that. One of our biggest things is that we can boast of a 97% passing rate on the national counselor exam for the first time. So that's 
Um, that's what's important. Like we can say that 97% of our students pass the exam on their first time taking it, taking the exam. And so a lot of our students choose to take the exam prior to graduation. So when their degree is conferred, they send that over and they are licensed and can start working right away. Another big benefit, um, Liz talked about that, is our cohort, cohort model. You have a ready-made community of colleagues prior to graduation. So one of the benefits of the cohort model is that the majority of your coursework is taken in one day. There are some classes that are offered on off cohort days or that are offered in intensives on Saturdays, but the majority of your coursework will happen on that Thursday. And because of that, you'll be interacting with those students every week all day long. And as you do that, you build relationships and those, you'll graduate with 20 to 30 colleagues before you've even hit the ground running in the field. And that is a huge asset. A lot of the counseling profession is built upon relationships. And so you will have a head start because you will have worked with this group and you all will graduate together. We have a big recognition of our graduates and their clinical skills in local agencies. Every week I have at least one agency that reaches out and says, can we please have some of your practicum and internship um, students, can we please post an, a notice on your bill on your website about job offers because your graduates are so solid in their clinical skills and we want to have them. And so that's a huge benefit of our program. <coughs> excuse me, some of our program requirements. Our program um, is two and a half years. I always tell applicants to make space for three years though. And the reason I say that is life happens. And so we wanna make sure that we've created the space for us to be successful. A lot of times students come in with an expectation, I'm gonna be in and out. And we are not here just to give you a set of academic skills. We want to um, help you with your spiritual formation. We want to build you up to be a solid counselor that stands the test of time, that you don't burn out easily. So we're gonna talk a lot about self-care and we wanna make sure that you're taking care of yourself in this process. And so that's one of the reasons that I encourage students to make room for three years. That way, if you finish in two and a half, woohoo! And if you finish in three, you're not disappointed and you know that you've made space and you've done the best that you can do at this time. Our degree is 64 hours. 60 of those hours are clinical counseling content. Four of those hours are two of our theology courses that are taught by theology faculty. So once again, we're giving you the best of the best teaching your courses. You do have a pra professional practice requirement that's practicum and internship, and that is a requirement that is um, present for all students in the state of Ohio. We do provide assistance in that placement for your practicum and internship, so you're not left um, treading water trying to figure out what is a good place for me to go. There's many options for you to customize your degree. So we have our core requirements, but we also offer all of these electives. So counseling children, adolescents, supervision, death and grieving, marriage and family, identity counseling, trauma-informed care, human sexuality, abnormal personality, addictions. There's lots of options for you with your electives to um, customize your degree. And then after you graduate, you are always welcome to come back and take these classes for your CEUs. A lot of times students are like, I wish I could take them all. You'll be here forever. So come on back <laughs> and take them after you've graduated because you do have to earn continuing education units after you graduate to maintain your license. So some things that you can do now, that's usually what students ask. The first is to implement a quality self-care program. You wanna start now taking care of yourself so that you can do well when you're here. Graduate school is very challenging. And so we wanna make sure that you're taking care of yourself in this process. We want you to be successful. So we will do things like Dr. Mann did for Liz and check in on you to make sure that you're doing well. And I'll help you understand that the patterns you create in graduate school, they will carry you through into the profession. And so if you build solid skills now for self-care, you'll use those in the profession and you'll have a long and healthy career. You wanna start creating space. 
having conversations with the people that you work with, with your employer. I'm going back to school and you wanna make space for that. Have conversations with friends and family. I'm not gonna be as accessible as I was before. I tell the students when they're here for orientation and even in um, their intro class, it's important that you prioritize school, but you also still find ways to prioritize family and friends because one day you'll be done in two and a half to three years, you'll be done with the program and you wanna have friends on the other side. So you wanna make sure that you have conversations to prepare them for this process. And then have a conversation with yourself, making sure that you remind yourself, this is a calling. This is something that I am called to do, something that I want to do so that when it does get challenging, we don't get discouraged. And when it does get challenging, we seek out help and we get the self-care that we need to do. Having that conversation that I'm going to have hiccups and that's okay, that's part of the process. And then the last thing you need to do is apply. That's it. I lost Max. Thank you, uh, Yvonne, I appreciate that. Um, so I'd like to pause at this point and uh, see what questions you might have for Yvonne or for the other counseling faculty. Is generally the first person that you will begin speaking with. So Aaron, if you would uh, just talk to us for a minute about uh, what you do. You're on mute. As you can see, what I was about to say, well, <laughs> like to actually say that I'm the most important person in the admission process. That is totally untrue. Renee is. I know Lee can say, yeah, probably I am, but <laughs> I'm going to be your first step. So a lot of your names I'm seeing there right now, a lot of you I've already spoken with. So that's awesome. But tomorrow you're going to hear from me also just to say thank you for attending and so on and being with us tonight. But I want to help you get that next step and get ready to apply present you with all the information when it comes to sending in your financial aid and so on. So you have all the links you need to do to take that next step so Renee can help you and then Laura. So expect to hear from me tomorrow. Um, I'm definitely excited to see you all and I'm definitely excited to work with you here in the future. Thank you, Erin. Uh, Renee, again, she is our coordinator of admissions and she's gonna to talk to us a little bit about the application process, Renee. Thank you. It's good to have you here with us tonight. I recognize some of your um, names as well. So I believe some of you have started the application process. Um, but I'm just going to share my screen real quick to give those of you who may not have um, uh, started this yet just an idea of what to expect and what you'll see. Um, so I'm just I'm logged into my um, test application. And um, it really is pretty self-explanatory, but I am always available for questions if you run into any difficulties through the process. Um, so uh, when you first um, log in the very first time, you're going to be creating, uh, or you're going to just be answering a few short questions, and then you'll get an email sent to you with a temporary password. Um, so you'll be able to log in and out of your application as you have time to work on it. You'll be able to change that password to something that um, <laughs> you can remember. And um, so personal background is just the first section of the application. Uh, so typical, you know, name, address, date of birth, that kind of thing. Um, and then the next one is where you're going to be choosing the program of interest the location, the term that you would like to start. Um, and this is the section that kind of drives the rest of the application. Uh, so the choices on the, the menu on the left may look different if I had chosen um, the Doctor of Ministry program or the Master of Divinity. Um, so once you choose Master of Arts in Clinical Mental Health Counseling, this is when you're you know, then gonna also see uh, counseling essays on the left-hand side. Um, so I just wanted to point out that it might look a little different on the left until you choose your program. Um, and then seminary supplemental, uh, just some uh, questions about your background and denomination, um, your how you feel about your um, education preparation, um, 
a little bit of info about um, financial debt that you might be bringing with you uh, as far as loans from undergraduate go. And then the essays again, as I mentioned, um, there are four essay questions that we ask you to respond to. You will just be typing those in a Word document and then at the bottom here, you can see where there's an uh, option to upload them so that they come right into the application and I'll be able to see all of that once you submit. Um, your academic history, uh, you'll just add an institution and start typing uh, whatever you know, your under, undergrad school was. Um, let's see. Sorry. What I want, I can't do two things at one time here. So um, if, you know, Ohio State was your school, a lot of people come from Ohio State. So <laughs> then you'll just click on, you know, whichever appropriate uh, selection that is, and it'll fill in there. Um, I'm going to cancel out of that, but then you would just save it and it would um, pop up. Uh, you can upload a copy of your transcript if you would like, um, but we would still need uh, an official copy sent directly from the institution to us um, to be considered official. Uh, so a lot of places now you can, you can uh, request that to be sent digitally, which is completely fine. Um, you can provide my email address and uh, it'll come to me and I can upload it into the system then. Employment, we simply just, you can you know, click on add employer and we simply just are looking for your current employment, not entire uh, employment history. And recommendations is the final kind of important section here. We do ask you to provide two uh, reference letters for us. So you're gonna be asking somebody to um, write a letter of recommendation. One of them we'd like to be a pastor, a spiritual mentor, um, somebody who has held that type of role in your life, somebody who knows you well, knows your calling um, is preferable. So just ask, um, you know, you'll add a recommender here, uh, type in their information, provide their email. And when you click send to recommender at the bottom, the system will email your person um, a request for the letter. And it gives them the opportunity to upl upload it right into the system. So when they submit it, it comes right into your application without having a paper trail to chase. So, um, so you'll do that for your pastor or spiritual mentor. And then you'll add another recommender and we're asking for one professional. Uh, reference. Um, and once you submit, I'll see the information you've provided. Uh, your reference letters do not have to be there when you submit. They can still come in after submission. I know some people feel like everything has to be uh, provided prior to hitting the submit button. You don't have to. So as long as you have um, just the basic information filled out, if your transcripts haven't arrived yet or your references haven't arrived yet, that's okay it'll still be fine if you've already submitted. Um, and if you do submit and realize, oh no, I skipped one of the you know, major parts. I, I wish I could get back in. Just let me know. I can unsubmit it for you. You can get back in and start to <laughs> submit again. So that's not a problem. We'll, we'll work it out. Um, and like I said, please, any questions that you would have along the way, let me know. Um, I will add really quickly here that um, there's an additional step in the uh, admission process for clinical counseling students. So once all of the elements of your file has been completed, it will, it will be reviewed for admission. Um, and if favorably uh, reviewed, then we will send the file onto the counseling department and you'll be contacted to schedule uh, the MMPI personality inventory and a follow-up interview with one of our counseling faculty. So all of this right now with COVID is being done uh, online. So you'll be able to complete that inventory online um, and then there'll be a, a Zoom meeting scheduled uh, for your interview. And that's the final step. They have final say in your admission to the program. 
And you'll hear from me again then after that too. Uh, let, I'll let you know the admission decision and next steps. I think that's it. If you have any questions, please let me know. Any questions for Renee? Okay. Um, Laura Bedox is our registrar, and uh, Laura is going to talk to you for a couple of minutes about uh, what she does and how she can assist you. Laura? Good evening. I will echo. It is really good to see each and every one of you here this evening. Thanks for sharing your time with us. Um, I realize my role with you is a little bit premature right now. But if you uh, do choose to apply or have started the application process and are admitted, um, Renee essentially would pass the baton to me. Um, I would have the privilege of walking with you through your first registration and then throughout the rest of your time here with us. Um, Renee would include a registration form in your acceptance packet and you'd return that to me and I'm happy to answer any questions, help you with whatever. The counseling program is wonderful to actually kind of outline your courses for you on the registration form so there's not a lot of guesswork there. Um, cost is always a big question for everyone. And so I will say, since I work um, with student counts as well, um, the cost for the program, uh, for the counseling program is 650 per credit hour for a 64 hour program. Um, you look like a bunch of very sharp individuals and I'm sure you can do the math. So um, that is tuition cost. Um, we do as, um, is it Liza? Is that how you pronounce that? Okay. Um, we do partner with Ashland University since we're a graduate division of the university. We partner with their financial aid office and we have some wonderful people working there that are happy to talk with you about whatever questions you might have up front. And then they will also, as Renee mentioned, um, journey with you throughout. You will have a specific person that you'll work with. So if that's an option for you, um, they're there to help you. Um, if anyone is eligible for VA um, education benefits, we also have an Office of um, Veterans Affairs and they will work with you on um, the paperwork that you need to submit and securing those um, benefits each semester. We do also offer some scholarships. Renee um, is our scholarship liaison or queen, whatever you wanna call her. Um, so you would want to work with Renee on your scholarship questions and deadlines and all of, all of those questions. We also do offer a payment plan. So if you'd prefer not to take financial aid, which would be great if you're able to do that, that's wonderful. Um, you can set up through um, our, it's kind of a third party uh, provider um, and you can spread the payments for the semester out over the course of the semester, like five months or whatever, um, or five payments, I should say. So um, those are some options to be able to pay for your education. Um, and those are typically the questions that I get. Um, I will also work with you when it comes time to cross the stage. Um, when you're ready to submit your graduation application, I will be there to walk with you through that as well. So hopefully I get to see lots of you in the future. Look forward to it. Questions? Yes, questions. Any, any other questions, whether it has to do with the program or the application process? Okay, if there aren't any other questions, um, I, I wanna uh, close in prayer, but before I do, I wanna say to you that, you know, I think I can speak for, for faculty and staff when I say that of all the different things that we do here and all of the, the tasks that we find rewarding, um, I think one of the things we find the most rewarding is the ability to be able to journey with you if you become students in your calling. And, and um, as, as God works that out in your lives, we feel privileged to be able to walk beside you and do that and help you with that as well. Uh, so we do look forward to seeing you if this is the direction that God is calling you. Uh, and uh, please reach out.